Thank you for listening to the Catch Fire London podcast. For more information about CTF London, visit us on ctfl.life. I don't know about you, but I'm done with lethargy. Well, that's just me then and Alistair. Woo! I'm done with it. That's not what I'm preaching on tonight, but I'm done with it. I stood there in worship and I looked at Matt. And Matt and Kate are here. Matt, Kate. Drag them in. Drag them in. Drag them in, please. Drag them in. There's something, um, someone, well, I don't even know where we were. I'm not going to apologise for whatever happens tonight. I'm really wrecked. And we were somewhere recently and someone turned to me and they said, Chloe, I am so sorry. We were out ministering somewhere and they said, I am so sorry. (laughs) Drag them all in. They apologised because they realised that they're coming to church and catch a fire London week on, week in, week out, taking his presence for granted. <laughs> and we go to <laughs> we go to so where are you two going? Come on. And the rest of you. I never want to take his presence for granted. Can someone say amen in this place? Can you say it like you mean it? And I haven't realized how much gold we have here. I mean, I know we have gold and I'm grateful, but (laughs) when the presence of God comes, in scripture, some people got knocked off their horse. Other people got blinded. Other people were muted. And then they got their tongue back. And I never want to take him for granted. And I just want us all to stand in this place for a moment. I don't know what's going to happen, but can you just stand right now? And just lift your gaze to heaven. And why don't you just, can we just thank him all together? Father, I want to thank you for what you did last year. God, I want to thank you for your presence. Come on, just start to thank him for last year. Thank him for his presence. Come on, I can hear two of you right now. Just thank him for his presence right now. Because sometimes when his presence comes, other stuff goes. Joy comes. Deliverance happens. Stuff that's not allowed in you gets to go out. Passion, tenacity comes. God gives to you when you call on his presence. And and I'm not worried about this. In the revival in 94, John and Carol just like, they just carried on speaking. And for some of you are getting distracted right now, but I ask that you turn to him and just thank him. Come on, just speak out loud. Just thank him for what he did last year. For the love of mercy, thank him. (laughs) Thank him, honor him. Because... God did something in my heart when the person turned to me and said, I am so sorry that we take you and Stu for granted sometimes. We take you and the leadership team, but more than that, we take the presence of God for granted. And I never want to take it for granted. And Matt and Kate, I just want to honor you publicly for what you sow in week on week on week on week on week. Early hours, late nights. I know me and Stu and Ali particularly and Tom, we understand what it's like and many other people, but I honor you publicly and I prophesy that you are going to be more wrecked by him this year than any other year. I prophesy right now that you are going to have nighttime encounters, angelic visitations. I felt that even one night this year, the two of you are going to be woken up at the same time with a physical manifestation and visitation from Jesus. He's going to speak to you directly. He's going to give you new downloads. He's going to give you songs. He's going to give you fresh musical instruments to play. I felt, Kate, that 
What happened prophetically this morning with you sitting and standing on keys and leading worship? God said that is just a tipping point. New mercies every morning. Something shifting this year for you both. You're going up levels. are going to be new worship leaders coming in to join current worship leaders. So if that's you out there, say I'm having it. If you want to be part of this extraordinary worship team, I suggest that you start raising your hands and declaring, I want to be part of it. Accept me, God. Pick me, God. And I prophesy that you two are going to see extraordinary signs and wonders and miracles in your team. I felt there are going to be people coming around you to serve you like never before 2017. What is done is done. What is learned is learned. What is fresh is here. There's a fresh anointing coming to stay. And it cannot be taken away. It's time to stand. It's time to step in. It's time to dive in. It's time to be immersed. It's time to get excited. It's time to expect. And it's time to stand on the shoulders of your Papa God and say, this is my team. What heaven has declared, so be it this year. Let the revival of the young adults categorized by extraordinary worship come in 2018 like we've never seen before. We call in the people down the motorway queuing. We call in people off the streets to feel and see and hear. I prophesy, let revival come, God. We want you. We need you. Shut up, 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 yeah. I'm not going to settle for second best this year. Shakara manaye. And I speak to the worship teams, the intercession teams. I speak to those with intercessory mantles on their shoulders in this place that are being stubborn and not stepping forward. And I call you out. I call you out. I call you out. I call you into your anointings. I felt there are people in this room that have had promises prophesied over them and you're the one in the way of seeing it fulfilled because you've, you've been fearful or you've been stubborn or you've been afraid. I call you out now. Anyone got a dream that they didn't see happen in 2017? Okay, step out of your, step out of your seat prophetically. Just step out. Come on, step out. This is, just, just step out. And I just, I want you between you and God right now, just to say nothing, including me, is going to stand in the way of me stepping into my destiny. Come on, let's say it together. Nothing, including me, is going to stand in the way of me stepping into my destiny. I felt someone felt shame in that moment or embarrassment for stepping out of your chair. I don't know why, but mate, the Lord is just lifting that off of you right now. Nothing is more important than you being in the rhythm of the river. And I declare let the rhythm of the river be in this place in Catch a Fire London for 2018. God, I choose to be immersed. I choose to step in. I choose to remain. I choose not to get out on the bank and be cold and miserable. I choose to be in the rhythm of the river that flows from heaven that Ezekiel talks about, that the scripture talks about. And I declare, God, that I will not choose to swim upstream. I declare I will choose to float with you down the rapids of the river. (sighs) And the rapids are increasing. There's a stirring. There's a scripture that talks about the angels stirring the waters. And I felt tonight that there was a quickening of the stirring of the waters happening. Sal, in worship, I decided not to come and say something because I want to say it publicly. But I felt that the Lord is saying to you, don't wait for the sequel of your book. Your second book's coming. It's coming quickly. I felt the Lord say, I'm going to say it and the rest is up to him. I felt that you were going to be sought after and even places like Waterstones were going to ask to have your book on the shelves. I saw them flying off the shelves. I felt the Father say that he's deployed angels to take the word of your book to many, many places. Even schools are going to be seeking after your book. People aren't going to understand why revivals are going to start happening in primary schools. And it's because kids are going to be reading that book in the break time. And I declare in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against that book will prosper. And Father, we loose right now from heaven the angels that you showed me to go on behalf of your business for Sal to just deploy that book to the nations and the schools in this place can someone say amen in this place Father I thank you for the dream you put on our heart and I thank you that Sal was bold and beautiful to step into that dream no matter what the cost and it cost but the Father says tonight that he's going to restore the cost the time, the finances and the thinking space, he's going to restore it all to you and you're going to have a double this year Year. So let the year of the double for Sal and Matt come quickly without, without waiting. And God, I thank you in advance for your kingdom coming. Who has a dream? 
Why don't you just ask the Lord to say, let it happen and let it happen quickly. Come on. Wow, that sounded a bit miserable. Come on, just tell him you're serious. Shabbatabaya. Someone needs to say shabbatabadu. Like, like, or something that God gives you a dream for a purpose. He gives you a dream that only you can fulfill. No one else could have written the book like Sal wrote that book. I mean, honestly, Lily in the cloud. It's beautiful. God's given you a dream that only you can fulfill. It's time to step into that promise and into that dream. <sighs> can you high five your friend and say, I'm having it this year. <laughs> and you can take your seat. There are, there are dreams and promises for the worship team, but I, I don't want this year to be a normal year. I mean, to be quite frank, when's it ever been normal? I want this year to be a year, I said, I think it was on New Year's Eve, my prayer was Holy Spirit and my prayer journal, Holy Spirit, I want to feel you every second of every day. And if it's possible for Jesus, it's possible for me. I just need to choose. I just need to choose him. Some of you aren't choosing him as much as you should be choosing him. Some of you are bored of morning devotions. Well, that's because you're probably getting distracted and are devoting your attention to something that's other than him. Because when you devote your attention to him, it's never boring. There's never a quick fix in the kingdom and it takes time. And so give him your time. Give him your attention. Because he doesn't want a quick fix. He wants to abide. Remember preaching a message once, don't pop in, it's time to abide. He doesn't like visitors that pop in. He wants visitors that stay because you'll never outstay your welcome with the king. <laughs> oh, Lord. We had 300 very British leaders on Friday night blowing up 900 balloons and getting absolutely wrecked. 300 leaders in the United Kingdom getting roasted and wrecked by the presence of God. And as for me and my house this year, I wanna be a joy-filled, presence-filled, glory-filled, incredible, shadaraye, daughter of the king, bursting forth with everything, not wasting a minute, not a single breath in my lung being wasted. And I'm having it. I'm having it. Tell your friend you're having it. <laughs> yeah, we had to teach the leaders to say, I'm having it, because they all said, I'm having it. That doesn't quite have the same ring, does it? Stewie says it best in his South London accent. Don't you, babe? I'm having it. I'm having it. We, we miss the age. <laughs> um, I do feel that I want to... I'm going to go through... No, I'll see what he says. Right, turn with me to James 4, verse 7. I felt that that was just what the Lord wanted to do quickly. Steve, get ready for the greater. Don't settle for second best. James 4, verse 7. Ha! Was that a giggle or a cry, Stevie? Yeah. Aww. Aww. I asked the Lord for a word for 2018, like I often do, but um, I felt him say, Chloe, there's a word that I released in the church that Tom, Alistair and Stu want to listen for this bit. When I was praying and asking for a word from the Lord, the Lord said, there's a word, I'm not going to give you a new word because you haven't activated the last word I gave you. I'm like, sorry, what? <laughs> Holy moly. And he said, a lady came, Ash Smith, and released a prophetic word that you've done nothing about in October. 
And I felt that for many of us, we get prophetic words. And we always think that it's the start of a, a new season, beginning of 2018. But you know what? The Lord's outside of time. And it's a fresh start for us. I get that in the physical, but in the spiritual, there are words that still haven't come to pass for all of us. And there are words that we haven't chosen to partner with yet. There are words that are kind of like have been spoken out. You know, scripture says in Psalm um, somewhere, it says that the declarations or the decrees or the words of his mouth stand forever. And the problem is when we have a prophetic word and we don't turn to him and say, what does this look like? What does this smell like? What does this sound like? How can we partner with you? It's kind of just floating it's, it's, it's just going to, you're waiting for him to do the thing for you. And I got a bit of a rebuke when I was like, oh God, come on, you're going to give me an amazing word for 2018. He's like, no, I'm not, because you've not activated the other one. The other one that Ash Smith released from here is three words. And she said, healthy, wealthy, wise. That's basically all she said. She didn't elaborate. She didn't, she didn't really go into detail. She just said healthy, wealthy, wise. Someone say healthy. healthy. Wealthy. Wealthy. Wise. wise. Just turn to your friend and say you're going to look a lot more like that by the end of this session. <laughs> and, and one of the things, and I'm like, well, what does that mean? What, what does that actually mean, God? And one of the first things he said, well, to be healthy, wealthy, and wise let the name of Jesus be the first thing that comes off your lips in the morning. And let the name of Jesus be the last thought before you shut your eyes. Okay. <laughs> that will make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> Have you got anything more you want to add, God? <laughs> We're kind of doing packing that one out a little bit. And, um, and then he gave, me th he gave me three things. So if you've got your journals, I'm going to ask that, or that you write some of this stuff down because I feel this is a word that is going to take us to the end of eternity, for one, but the end of 2018, the 31st of December, 2018, I declare that we will look different. Alistair, you're right tonight, honey. Come on. Can someone else say amen? I mean, not that you're not always on it, but um, you're just being so encouraging. <laughs> I felt the Lord say, this is, I, I, this is going to be a year of freedom for, for Catch a Fire London. It's going to be a year of freedom. We're not going to concentrate on deliverance. We're going to concentrate on staying free. There's a difference. Concentrating on staying free means that you don't entertain demons every second of every day. You're concentrating on Jesus. You're constant, concentrating on remaining, being free and living in freedom, not looking and navel-gazing at all the dark stuff. James 4 verse 7 says, Therefore, submit to God. Someone say submit. submit. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, I just released that one, um, that one passage in our leaders retreat at Centre Parks, but I didn't go into it. Now this is what, the, what I felt the Lord saying, that this year, this scripture is going to be our bedrock, it's going to be our foundation. Because if we have this as our foundation, then everything else will start to come in line in unison behind it. Does that make sense? Are you awake? Yeah. Yes. Therefore, submit. What does submit mean? Submit means to accept or yield. Some say I choose to yield. <laughs> Defer to, agree with, bow down to, bow to, surrender to, give way to, back down to, and humble yourself to. That word submit basically means you don't have a choice over your life. And many of us are making choices in our souls that are completely contrary to the prophetic words that God has given us in our life. And, and I, really, I really believe this year that if we stay true to ourselves, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee, submit to God, bow down. It's not just about submission in control, it's about I choose to bow down to you. I choose to humble myself to you. I choose to lift you up. I choose to say, you are Lord of my life. I choose to yield. I choose in the midst of a disagreement with the Holy Spirit to say, hands up, you probably know better than me. Stop fighting. It's painful. Submit. Just look at
at your friend and say, it's time to submit. Now, submission can sound like a really harsh word, but this is a really good word because when you look at the detail of it in Scripture, it, it, it means agree with. I want to agree with Jesus over everything, not Satan, not the devil. And the moment we're not submitting to God, we're submitting to the opposite, who is the liar of all liars, the enemy, the evil one. When it comes to looking at our building stuff, I have a choice. I have a choice to get all het up and start agreeing with the lies of the enemy. Or I have a choice to submit to God and say, you know the plans and purposes you have for me. Submission is bowing down to not creating something that's convenient to meet your soul's needs or desires. And so in 2018, I don't want to be in a place where I am not submitting to my King Jesus. I go where he goes. I say what he says. I hear him. I have my ear attentive to him. I choose to say to him, I will yield to you, even if I don't like it. And you know what that is? That's a grown-up son. It's not a kid that tries to get their own way. It's a child that says, I'm going to hear and heed and listen to the prophetic words and choose to step in the flow, even if it's not convenient for me. Ooh, look at your friend and say, prophetic words are great. Come on. They're great. And what does resist the devil mean? I love this one. Just say this with me. It means to withstand. withstand. Oppose. Oppose. Be, resistant to. Be resistant to. Hold out against. Hold out against. Combat. Combat. Confront. Confront. And outlast. The name of Jesus will outlast all names. And so, when it comes to resisting the, the enemy, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Anything that comes your way this year where you're like wanting to give in to temptation, whether it's the lies of the enemy, whether things aren't going your way and you're having a bit of a strop, I declare over you that your first thought will be Jesus. Your first thing that comes out of your lips will be Jesus. At the name of Jesus, the enemy flees. He has to. Just high five your friend. Just say Jesus rules. Because when we resist the enemy, when we withstand, when we oppose, you have a choice. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I think, says, I put blessings and curses before you, life and death. Now choose. Someone say life. Life is Jesus. And so part of resisting and pushing back against the enemy's tactics is the name of Jesus. So let worship be your warfare this year. Let worship and the declaration of the risen name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth be the thing that flees the enemy. For me and my house, we're going to declare the name of Jesus. I spoke a word this yesterday or the day before at this event and I just said, shift happens. <laughs> In the kingdom, it has to. It's completely contrary to the world expression. Shift has to happen. And everyone laughed, and there's a play on words, but it's true. Because if I'm in a place where I know who my king is, and I'm resisting the devil, and I'm submitting to God, then shift has to happen. But if you're not in that place, things won't go well for you. So just tell your friend, or look at your friend right now, and just bless them to submit and resist. Come on. Submission and resisting. <laughs> Ooh. Then what does it say? Resist the devil and he will? Flee. Someone say flee. flee. I love this. Listen to this. The word here originally means, this is the, this is the enemy. When, when you are in the presence of God, when you are so surrounded by the presence of God, when you are so in him, the enemy can't physically stand. The enemy, where are you two going? Where are you two going? That's an anointed, I'm serious. I've, you need to stay there for a minute. Just stay there for a minute. I think there's a few more tears to come, Stevie. <laughs> Carolina wouldn't let you move. Aww. Just ask him to come again. He will flee. The enemy flees. I want us to learn about abiding. You may think you're done, but God's got more. So just rest. Just rest. That wasn't aimed at you two, but seeing as you're there. <laughs> he will flee from you. Flee means to run away, to vanish. 
<laughs> it says the enemy will make a run for it when you submit to God. He scarpers. He's out of there. He cannot stand your mind coming in line with heaven. He cannot stand your heart living with him in heavenly places. The moment you say, I yield, bam, the enemy's out of there. Cannot stand the presence of God. And so when we're in a place of hearing lies and choosing things that aren't life, we just need to say, I submit, I yield, I bow down, I humble myself. And vroom, uh, the enemy's out of there because he's not got anything on you. Why? Because you're hidden in him. The moment you choose not to be hidden in him and a, oh, this is going to happen. He's got hold of you over there. Resist. Someone say resist. And he will flee. He will make a run for it. He will escape. He will retreat. He will clear off. He will be like a bolt of lightning out of there. He will take off and escape you quickly. Shabba dabba do. <laughs> Submit, resist, and he will flee. I want that to be my everyday lifestyle. Not as a religious mantra, but in my everyday lifestyle, I choose my first thought in the morning, Jesus. My last thought at night, Jesus. The first thing off my lips, Jesus. The last thing off my lips, Jesus. So that I am submitting and loving and honoring. Ooh, who wants to submit? Come on. Okay. Right, I'm going to whiz through this really quickly. I write down earlier, the moment you entertain the presence of God, the enemy can't wait to escape your presence. Demons hate a joy-filled and hope-filled believer. It's time to return to joy. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so healthy. I want to just say a couple of things about being healthy. So no, I think one of the, the first things of this prophetic word is as we submit, as we resist, and as the enemy flees, it's going to be a lot easier to stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. And often I don't go after the physical side of health publicly, but I'm going to go after the physical side of health publicly. The Lord is calling this church to be so fit and so healthy and so choosing life with everything that goes into your mouth this year that I believe by the end of this year, people will look at us around the world and say, my God, what has the Lord done in this house? I really believe that you need to start choosing life. I need to start choosing life. What goes in your mouth goes into your temple. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. What you take in is, is, is part of the, you're, you're not owned by yourself, you're owned by him. So what goes in your lips needs to be honoring him. And I want to serve notice on overeating and undereating. I want to serve notice on lethargy, on sitting on sofas, get off your butts and take a walk outside and get a little bit of exercise, church. I feel some resistance. church of young men by the end of 2018 <laughs> did you just jump up and say I'm having it <laughs> who's having that I'm serious if you want no young man I haven't got to the girls yet <laughs> I'm being serious the Lord is watching he was really strong with me really strong with me and he said you have to go after the physical nature of your church because people are watching Catch a Fire London this year has been put on the map and in people's view that you have no idea about. They're watching. And one thing the Lord challenged me with this year is, Chloe, your people reflect who you are. Yes. Come on. What happens at the top filters down. What happens in your world filters down. I declare skinniness and obesity leaves this church in the name of Jesus. And I declare temples of the Holy Spirit that are honouring to God come in manifest form in our physical beings so that we are glorifying Jesus Christ of Nazareth in everything that we turn our hands to. And if you want to be a hench man by December the 31st, 2018, I suggest you jump to your feet. It basically means fit. Fit. Healthy. We're going this. Healthy and in line with heaven. It means having a heart rate 
that is in line with heaven. It means having a physical heart that is strong. It means having low blood pressure. It means having every organ that is fully healthy, fully fit. It means choosing life with what you put in your mouth. It means reducing alcohol, stopping smoking. It means to be able to bow down and say, God, you are my Lord. I choose to exercise and honor you so that I live a long life in the land the Lord my God has called me to. More? <laughs> Have it. Come on, take it. He prophesied it. Have it. Fit and healthy. And I prophesy that every heart in this body, in these, in these bodies in this room, will remain fit and healthy until the Lord takes you home when it's your time. Do not allow your bad choices to take you early. I've never said that. Do not allow your bad choices. Because God has a destiny, a plan, and a purpose for you. And I, for one, want to remain in his plan and purpose and for the last breath in my lungs, in Jesus' name. I declare, what, what? What? And I used to be anorexic when I served notice on anorexia and bulimia in this house. And I declare that a godly body image and a love of your own body in you guys will come to fruition in 2018. I encourage you to start blessing your bodies, men, and saying, I love my body. I love who you've called me to be. But it's time to choose life. Okay, girls, jump up on your feet. This is not what I was going to do, but I'm going with the flow. Woo! Because to be healthy physically means in a good physical and mental condition, flourishing in good shape and full of life and energy. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is not about beauty, it's about him that is within you and you honoring him that's within you to remain healthy all your days. I prophesy, ladies, in this place that you will be incredibly fit, tenacious, passionate, brave, bold, and incredibly excited about exercise, loving Jesus, and everything that you put in your mouth. I declare that you do not need to starve yourselves to be beautiful. I declare that you can eat in the will of, in the will of heaven what you want in line with what he's saying. I'm not going to tell you what to eat. And I declare in Jesus' name that this year, many of you are going to get married. Many of you are going to have vision of your future spouses but you check with your pastor you don't just go up to someone and say oi I had a vision about you you're going to be really hench by 2018 so we're going to get together no you're not going to do that although I feel the joy of the Lord on that Woo! come on I declare in this place ladies that you will be like Esther's this year you will take time to love yourselves you would take time to give yourselves rest. You would take time to exercise. You will download the running app and the walking app on your iPhone that tells me to drink water every half an hour, that tells me when to walk, it tells me when to stop, it tells me when to run, it tells me when to do some squats when I'm brushing my teeth at night. I do it. I do my squats every night when I brush my teeth. I'm getting ready for skiing. And I declare in Jesus' name, come on, this is how you do a squat, girls. Knees. I'm a personal fitness trainer by trade. Knees above your ankles. Push your bum back a little bit. You just, that's it, breathe out. There you go, just simple little squats. Come on, just five more, just five more. Just five more, there we go. Push those butts back. Knees, points facing forward, but don't let the knees go over your toes, people. Breathe out as you go down, in as you come up. Breathe out on the exertion. I declare that the joy of the Lord will come to you as you exercise and that you will meet Jesus in the place of exercise. I declare, Ellie, that you are going to go on wild adventures. I speak, I speak to your soul and I remind your soul that you're called for adventures. And I speak to your soul and I declare this year is the year you will do your marathon. That you will be ready, you will be ready, and you're going to achieve more than you've ever wanted to or dreamt. And Father, I thank Thank you in advance for fullness of life and energy. Girls, put your hand on your head. And just say, Holy Spirit, I choose to treat myself. I choose to love myself. I choose adventure. I choose joy. I choose life. And I choose my godly body image. I love you, self. In Jesus' name. Amen. Someone say hallelujah. Because your body was bought, your body was bought by his body. Your body was bought by his body at a high price. So your body, 
His body deserves your body to come in line with heaven. So that you fulfill everything he died for, for you to walk in his prophetic words. Oh, and if you do want to lose weight, Dave Campbell knows someone who had supernatural weight loss when they went through a fire tunnel. They went through the fire tunnel three times and came out three dress sizes smaller. They had to go to the toilets and borrow a belt and had to hold their trousers up. I'm not kidding. So if you want to start unashamedly, if you want supernatural weight loss, I, this is not a shame thing. Just stand up. Come on. Take it. This is a moment. <laughs> oh, Dan. Come on. Take it. Take it. Father, I declare that it is going to be easy. That the moment we submit to you and say our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, you will make it easy. God, I thank you for supernatural weight loss this year. And I thank you we're going to have more energy for our families, for our kids, for ministry, for each other, for husbands, for wives. <laughs> In Jesus' name, I declare there's going to be more energy and supernatural weight loss. Let this house be known of one, where the presence of God is, but two, where you come and you lose weight and get fit in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay, sit yourself down. I challenge you. Oh, I don't know if I can say that now. I feel a bit bad. Your physical health will often be a reflection of your spiritual health. Because it's all to do with discipline and self-control. Oh, it feels really heavy. I'm so sorry. And I'm not just taking, I'm talking about weight. I'm talking about cigarettes. I'm talking about alcohol. I'm talking about overeating sugar. I'm talking about all of those things. Discipline is where we need to be. Not being disciplined, but being dis in discipline when it comes to our spiritual life. So just high five your friend and say, this is a year of health. Spiritually and physically. And how, don't download the app, honestly. And I want you to listen to this. I felt the Lord say, spiritual health. I, I, I said, what do you, how, do I, how do I talk about healthy, wealthy, wise? And he says, spiritual health. Chloe, how do you monitor this? I monitor spiritual health in me by the following. You may want to write these down. It's my checklist. My joy and fear levels. Likeness to Jesus. How am I doing? My compassion levels. How am I doing spiritually with compassion levels? My prayer life, capacity to love, my ability to forgive. I will say them again. Okay, so I monitor by joy and fear levels. How easily am I in fear? Depends on how much love I'm actually standing in. Because perfect love casts out all fear. My levels of likeness to Jesus. How am I doing? In the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit even, gentleness, kindness, self-control, you know, all of those things. My compassion levels, when I go to Kenya and I feel like, where has my compassion gone? I know that spiritually I'm not on, on point. So there's been a hardening in my heart somewhere. Compassion levels, when you hear things that, that aren't right, it's like, oh, I want to feel compassion. Prayer, how's my prayer life? Capacity for loving people. Ability to forgive easily and quickly without telling the other person they've done something wrong. How easily am I bumped? How easily am I frustrated? Frustration levels are a real sign of, of spiritual fitness being slightly off. How easily are you being frustrated? How easy is someone getting on your nerves? That's not the person getting on your nerves. That's probably your demons kicking off, <coughs> trying to convince you and wanting to get in between you and a friendship or a relationship. How quickly do I return to joy? It's that, that spiritual, physical health thing. You know, how quickly does my heart rate come back to normal when I've been pegging it at 12 kilometers an hour on a treadmill? And I, I time my heart rate coming down now. And I run, I have my heart rate, rate strap on, and I, I try, I'm trying to get better in the natural and my heart rate recovering quicker. And it's the same spiritually. How quickly am I returning to my joy? How quickly am I returning to love, to compassion, to forgiveness? How quick can I forgive? All those things are a sign of spiritual health. And where we're not doing well in those areas, we've got to spend more time on that. Get a little bit of deliverance, freedom. And it doesn't have to be a whole RTF. Please don't bombard my mum. <laughs> I'm just saying that publicly because you did so much for this church in 
Two and a half months, she saw 43 people. That's what we counted. She's not a paid member of staff, but this year, people, I declare, let us be responsible for our own lives as well. A quick shower in the morning, I'm like, oh, why have I woken up grumpy in the name of Jesus? <laughs> and I just do a quick thing. Spiritual health is about you taking responsibility, not running to someone else to fix your problems. It's time to take our spiritual fitness seriously. Worship. Do you want to worship? How desperate are you to spend time with Jesus? Is it of a tick box I've done it or is it I can't wait to come back here after work? How are we feeling in our life? That's all how I measure my spiritual health. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be perfect in everything, but it means keep a check on what's happening. When I start to feel my triceps wobbling, I'm like, <gasps> and in the morning, <sighs> 20 little press-ups on the carpet. You know, I have a check. I feel, I feel where I am spiritually and I feel where I am physically. And you need to learn this year, I believe, the Lord is saying. Learn how you feel spiritually to know whether you're online or not. Yeah? Start to learn yourself. Okay, number two. This is fun one. Wealthy. Someone say wealthy. Wealthy. I wrote down here, friendships, fruit of the spirit and finance. I felt there's a wealth, the word that Ash gave was healthy, wealthy, wise. We've done healthy, wealthy. There's a season of prosperity. And I believe the Lord said, Chloe, don't say about the length of a season because I'm outside of seasons. It's not summer, spring, winter, autumn. It's a season that's based in heaven. There's a season of prosperity coming to the house of Catch a Fire London for every single person that calls this place home. And it's not just prosperity of finances. It's prosperity of friendships. It's prosperity with the Holy Spirit. Everything you turn your hand to will turn to gold. Everything that you start to enter into, you'll be whipped up in quickly. It's not going to take a season to feel like you belong. Belonging and behaving and believing is going to be an easy thing for newcomers here. And I felt the Lord saying that prosperity is going to be so rooted as the foundation of this church that we're not going to understand why people want to join here. And then we're suddenly like, there's a well of prosperity here. Of course they want to join. Health, wealth, a wealth of finances. Who needs a finance miracle? Well, take it. Take it. Wealthy. Wealthy to prosperity. It's time to bust out of the poverty gospel. Jesus was given gold when he was born and he hung out with kings. I wrote earlier, I don't want to be in the poverty gospel anymore. If it's good enough for Jesus to be given gold and hang out with kings, then it's good enough for me. And we call in at my prayer for this year. We've had prophetic words about kings and queens. And the Lord said to me, Chloe, stop declaring your prophetic words out about kings and queens. I'm like, I'm partnering with you. He said, no, you're not. You've not asked me for them. What? You've not actually asked me for William and Harry, Meghan and Kate. You've just said, I choose to partner. And I'm like, God. Choosing to partner is very different to telling him I'm yielding and I'm ready and I want it. And I declared out, give me the royal family. Give me the government. Give me. God, I want them now. I want to see revival in the royal family. And until I said that, I believe that the prophetic word was like this. Until I took ownership of it. I said, I want them. I want it. What is it that you want this year? There's a wealth of relationships coming. There's a wealth of of finances coming. But there's a wealth of joy coming. There's a richness coming. Who wants a richness of joy? Come on, jump up and grab it real quick. Unless you're on the floor having an encounter. Just repeat after me in the name of Jesus. I choose the wealth of joy. The riches of the inheritance of Jesus. That is mine. mine. I declare the joy of the Lord will be my strength. Not the happiness of my circumstances. And just 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 reach over and, and pretend to go to your friend's pocket and say, Thank you for sharing your wealth. Because with wealth comes generosity. Where there's wealth in the house, there's a generous house. Woo! Where there's wealth. There's a generous house. And so what I would love as part of being wealthy in this season, the next point is a lot quicker, don't worry. I have no idea what the time is, but anyway. Um, oh, great. 10 minutes, great. There's, there's, give me 10. I need to get there. 
There's something about this house being known for extraordinary wealth, but extreme generosity. God gave his only son. And when God gave his only son, his, his action was giving. I want us to be known as giving and givers and blessing and surprising people and taking people to the Ritz, even if you don't, would, wouldn't necessarily go yourself. Taking people out for a drink, taking people for coffee, buying flowers, whatever it is. Go back to the friendship preach I did a while ago. You know, get to know your friends and be generous, wild givers. Because you can't outgive him. And when you're bumped... This is where spiritual health comes in. When you're bumped, you're freaking out, you get a bill. Well, the first thing you often dial back on is your time. Don't go there because it's his. You enter legalism. You enter the law of the, the, of, of the enemy the moment you withdraw your tithe because you're scared about not having enough money for that month. God will honor you if you keep giving your tithe and just carry on blessing. And so let this year be a year where you don't get bumped and worried about finances, but wealth and generosity, woof, spring up. Come on, someone say, spring up, a well of generosity. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm going to skip on that, skip on that, skip on that. Oh, Philippines 4 verse 19. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love you, JJ. You're so cool. Isn't JJ cool? Philippines 4. What does it say? Rejoice in the Lord now always. Someone say rejoice. rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. let your gentleness and patience be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Praise God. Be anxious, scared, troubled, worried for nothing. But in everything, by prayer, and supplication is that word again when we submit and we supplicate. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then turn over to 19. And my God shall supply full, cram, satisfy, fill, overspill, furnish, and influence all of your needs, requirements, lack, demands, <sighs> concerns, according to his riches, wealth, fullness, value, every area of your life being enriched in the glory by Christ Jesus. I'm having it. Healthy, wealthy, let this be a year where all of your needs are met in him as you submit, as you resist, so that the demons flee, so that your gaze and attention is on Jesus. Someone say hallelujah. Okay, and finally wise, number three. Wise wisdom, wise is knowledge, godly thoughts, being sharp, being discerning, not double-minded, full of heavenly insight, not, <laughs> not what worked before. Wisdom is not what you did yesterday, it's what he says for today. And I won't go into Moses and the whacking of the rock and all of that, but because I haven't got time. Not what you did yesterday, or not what meets your soulish demands and desires. And we, we've looked at a few buildings, and it's been root for, for the church, and I don't know why we haven't got one yet. But the Lord spoke to me, and he said, just because you need more room, doesn't mean that's the building. Your soul can lead you in decisions. But wisdom says, spirit of wisdom and revelation, come quick. What is the answer for now, not what happened yesterday? So being wise, part of this healthy, wealthy wise, is saying, spirit of wisdom, I say most days, spirit of wisdom and revelation, come quick. Because I don't know all the answers. I don't want to rely on yesterday's wisdom, because that's going to be different for the person standing in front of me, and it's going to be different for the blind eye in front of me. If I spit and he's actually wanting me to make a mud ball and slime and I keep spitting and I keep spitting and nothing's happening and I'm not asking for wisdom, then that lady's not going to be healed. I mean, God might do it anyway because he's kind. But the point is, wisdom, wisdom is huge. And being in the knowledge and fullness of who he is, being centered in him, is going to help us get a long way. I felt the Lord say this year more than ever, this year needs to be a year where... 
Soul-driven Christianity ends. I journaled this earlier. We can no longer be driven by good ideas or golden opportunities. If God's not in it, I don't want it. I don't want it. And if God's in it, then I'm going to get it. And when you don't get things and you keep trying and things aren't coming, it's because God's not in that, in that moment. So don't freak out. It's just not, he's not there yet or the right building's not there or the right car or the right spouse or whatever. But don't settle for second best. Is it going to be a tipping point? And when you choose to be full of wisdom in him and choose to listen to him, then when you make that decision, you'll know if it's of God and if it's in today's wisdom or yesterday's thing that went well. You'll feel it. And I feel now when I make a decision that is not based on heavenly decision here and now. I can feel it and I feel anxious. And I feel like this isn't right, but I'm making this decision. But God wants us to be wise. He's calling us as Christians not just to go after good soulish ideas, because that will never end up in your prophetic destiny. Good soulish ideas draw you down the line of looking at worldly wealth and not heavenly wealth. Not heavenly ideas, not necessarily what, what is right from heaven, but a quick fix to make something easier in your life. That's not wisdom. That soul desiring and craving. And so this year I declare 2018, we will have what God's will is, not what a good idea is. Can I hear an amen? amen. Jump up onto your feet quick. Please. I wrote this down earlier. I've got some more scriptures. I can maybe send them out. Anything that doesn't make sense to our rational mind or soul's desire will be reactive, cause conflict with the spirit. When we make decisions on our souls, that's when confusion and conflict comes in. So when you, does anyone feel sometimes they're in a battle to make a decision? Double-minded, just raise your hand if you ever feel double-minded. In a moment, you're in a conflict between your soul and your spirit. And so that's the moment you need to ask spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's a characteristic of the Holy Spirit in Proverbs and in Ephesians. You've been given them by the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. So stop making soulish ideas, uh, soulish agreements quickly. Take a step back and ask Holy Spirit to fill you to make the godly decision. And this is part of wisdom, but it's part of spiritual health. When we're spiritually healthy as well, when we're loving ourselves, we trust ourselves more, we trust God more, we can be in a place to make a decision that is in line with him. When we, when we, we saw land in Kenya before we got this land, our hearts were, we want this quickly, God. We want to do this quickly. And we were so desperate to get a village build. And that if we hadn't have asked for wisdom in that moment, we would have bought the wrong land. There are so many decisions we make that, that, that God will always bring things for the good. I know that. But there's a wisdom mantle, I believe, on this house if we choose to have Jesus Christ of Nazareth as our first thought and the one we go to. Rather than our soulish ambition, I want to make something comfortable. No, I'm going to go with what the Lord says. I'm going to choose him. Just put your hand on the person next to you and just say, I bless you with wisdom. Oh, I'm not going to even go into that. Can I have, is there anyone that can just play? Can anyone go, jump up? Are you all right? Are you okay there? Ooh. So girls, squats during brushing your teeth. <laughs> healthy, healthy. Spirit of wisdom and revelation, come quick. It's all right, lovey. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and wealth is in the house. This is what the Lord has said. Who wants to be healthy, wealthy, and wise this year? And I, I believe that let's be known as a family that has wisdom beyond our years makes godly choices, are fit and healthy, are fun to be around. No one wants a, a boring friend. No one wants a boring... Like the joy of... If you, if you think you're boring, if your friend thinks you're boring, have an injection of joy. Realign yourself. Sweetheart, Alice is my joyful friend. We laugh lots, don't we? 
there's a lot I've said, there's a lot I haven't said, but I really felt, I'm sorry if some of it was strong. But I, I believe people, the world is watching, but Jesus is watching. And healthy, wealthy, wise are everything that Jesus was. And God, I repent that we didn't jump on that prophetic word in October. Forgive us. But I thank you, you got my attention. I thank you, I chose to listen. Some of you need to make some choices tonight. Some of you need to choose life. Some of you need to cut out sugar. Some of you need to reduce the amount of carbs. Some of you need to stop smoking. But it's not in your own strength is in the strength of the Holy Spirit. And when his name is the first name off our lips in the morning and the last at night, he'll know that you want him and he'll give you strength. He'll take you where you need to go. He'll help you resist. So just repeat after me in the name of Jesus. 2018, I'm coming for you. I'm in it, but I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you with bravery. Come on, speak it out with bravery, bravery. with boldness, boldness, with strength, strength. with self-control, self -control. With, discipline, with discipline, and with excitement. And, excitement. and where blessings and curses are, blessings and life, and death, life and death, I choose life. I choose life. Come on, just tell him you're going to choose life. Come on. Life. You're in him. We choose life, God. Help us to choose life. Father, at night time, if I'm tired, just remind me to do those press-ups a little bit. Remind me to do my squats. Remind me to go out for a walk. Remind me to find you in the garden. Remind me to welcome you on my journey on the train. Remind me, God. God, remind me. Remind me to submit to you, to resist the devil, and then he will scarper out of my life. That's who he is. If you want to come to the front and just respond to him, I don't know what's, what we're going to do particularly, but I felt that if you want to be healthy, wealthy, and wise this year, just come and just between you and him, I don't want the ministry team laying hands on. Just, just come. Just come. Just come. Come on. If you want to be a, I don't even know what the word hench really means. Steve and Luke were joking about it with Stu a while back, and I think it just means like, you're fit, but buff, buff. <laughs> you said buff. <laughs> oh, Lord. You guys have got to keep me in the lingo. <laughs> oh. Just come forward, just move forward. Just move forward, all of you. Cram up because there's loads of people. I'm going to lift some stuff off of you with the sword of the Lord. And then we're going to declare some impartations if you're ready. So who wants to be healthy, wealthy, and wise this year? For the sake of your own body, but for the sake of your families and this family too. Father, in fact, why don't you repeat after me? Heavenly Daddy, I choose to repent for the times of 2017 that I chose badly, that I wasn't healthy, that I wasn't wealthy, <laughs> that I wasn't wise. If any of that was to do with me, I repent. I ask you to forgive me for overspending, for overeating, for overanalyzing, for watching too much TV, for distraction. Forgive me, God. The enemy wants your thought life. Don't give it.